Hello, this is Andy from the Engineers Academy and in this video series we're going to be looking at work solutions to the Unit 1 Engineering Principles exam that will be sat by students studying a BTEC Level 3 National in Engineering. Now the document that we're referring to in particular today are the sample assessment materials for the Unit 1 Engineering Principles exam and this document is issue 2 that is or has previously been available on the Edexcel website. Task 3 states, the diagram shows a template for a component. And the first part of the question asks us to convert 48 degrees into radians. Now there's a couple of things to point out first of all. When we talk about a full revolution on a circle, we often refer to that as being 360 degrees. But it's also important to remember that it's also 2 pi radians. Now, when we convert 48 degrees into radians, we can use this fact because we have 48 degrees. We want to convert 48 degrees into radians. So what we're going to do is we're going to times by the number of radians in a circle and divide by the number of degrees in a circle. The easiest way to remember this is the thing that we're trying to get to, as in radians, goes on the top. There's two pi radians in a full revolution. And the thing we're trying to get from degrees goes on the bottom, 360, because there's 360 degrees in a full revolution. You may also see this conversion factor expressed as pi over 180, which is just a reduction of what we have there, 2 pi over 360. However, the reason I often express it as 2 pi over 360 is because it fits in with what we've just said there about the number of revolutions in a circle. It's more logical to look at it in that respect. So if we carry out our calculation then, 48 degrees times 2 pi over 360 gives us 0 0.8378 rads. And that is accurate to four decimal places. If we move on and look at the next part of the question, Next we're asked to calculate the area of the shaded sector of the circle using radians. And although I've got my answer there in radians, 0.8378, accurate to four decimal places, I've kept the full calculator answer in the display of my calculator because I'm going to reuse it here. Now the area, if we work in radians, is as follows. Area equals r squared theta over 2, or you might see this written as a half r squared theta. And this formula, if you don't remember it, is actually included in the equation sheet. However, just before we carry out the calculation, I just want to show you where this comes from. Now, we know that the area of a circle is pi r squared. But we don't have a full circle. What we have is we have a proportion of a circle. And if we were to express this as a fraction, we know that a full revolution is 2 pi radians. But we don't have a full revolution. What we have is 0.8378 radians rather than 2 pi radians. So I'm just going to call that theta for the purpose of this explanation. So what we actually have is we have theta divided by 2 pi as a fraction. And that's how much of the circle we have here. Well, where the formula comes from on the left-hand side there is just basically by cancelling the two pi values out. And what we're left with is theta r squared over 2, which is the same as r squared theta over 2. So although we're not asked to derive that equation, I think it's useful as a mental check to make sure that the formula we're using is accurate. Anyway, let's continue with our calculation. So our area equals the radius. And if we check back on the diagram, we have a radius of 25 millimetres. So 25 squared times my angle, 0.8378. But I'm going to use my full calculator display, divided by 2, giving me an area of 261.8 to one decimal place. Now here's the important bit. We used millimetres for our radius, therefore that area there is in millimetre squared. I know in the practice tutorials I often recommend you to work in metres rather than millimetres, but in this case the question doesn't ask you to express 
the final answer in SI units. So 261.8 millimetres squared is the final answer.